Hello, hello, hello. Just checking to make sure we're live. Hi, it's Christy here from version of you 2.0. And as your food, body and mind relationship coach, I wanted to talk with you today about triggers. So I work with executive level moms who struggle with health and mental well-being. And today's tip is designed to help you to address your actions when triggered. And triggers come in two forms, habit triggers and emotional triggers. Habit triggers include default behaviors or actions where feelings do not influence your responses. For example, your morning routine on a Sunday may differ from your routine on any other morning. Maybe you sleep in, which immediately changes the action you take for the rest of your morning. Instead of one cup of coffee, you have two as you leisurely enjoy your morning foregoing your usual workout routine. Your habit trigger in this case is that second cup of coffee. Once you decide to have that second cup, your default response is then to skip your Sunday workout. Now another example of a habit trigger could be your immediate action when you visit your parents' house. And this is more specific to when maybe you're a post-secondary and living on your own. So for example, when visiting your parents' house, your first action at that time may have been to open up the fridge or the pantry to see what foods are in there. I used to do that all the time. Now these actions are default reflexes that we have based on experiences, but there's no emotional stimulation attached to them. On the other hand, as I'm sure you can imagine, an emotional trigger leads to an emotional response. This could result from an experience that left you feeling dismissed, rejected, criticized, embarrassed, stressed out, and even worried about a result. When an event triggers us emotionally, we respond emotionally. And it's these responses that lead us down that negative spiral. So here are a few tips to help you to avoid negative behaviors like overeating, when emotionally triggered. Number one, acknowledge your physiology. You need to notice the state of your body so that you can create awareness. And we've already talked about this in previous Facebook Live, so I'm not gonna go into detail. But if you did miss it, just scroll through some of these posts and you can find it there. Number two, you need to create awareness about why you're being triggered. And this is to explore the feelings by moving beyond these external circumstances that led to the, the trigger itself. For example, uh, let's use a work example. So you heard a colleague critique you on your presentation and your immediate response is to get angry and defensive. So you rush over, you interject, and you attempt to defend yourself by listing off a series of reasons or excuses or justifications as to why it wasn't as good as it could have been. Now, unfortunately, you leave this interaction feeling just as angry as whenever you got there, but now you're also a little regretful. You're regretful because you admitted this laundry list of excuses as to why it could have been better, but when in reality, you worked really hard on that project leading up to the actual presentation. So the trigger is rejection. And you want to understand why, when you feel rejected, you dial up those emotions and the responses to feel and act out confrontationally. So where in your childhood have you felt this immense sense of rejection or fear of not belonging? That as an adult, when you're triggered in this way, you just respond guns blazing. So here's step number three. Rather than immediately deploying your arsenal of actions that lead to inevitable feelings of regret and shame, I want you instead to stop, to breathe, and to step back. You see, you've already assessed that you're pissed off by acknowledging your physiology. You now understand that your emotional responses stem from a childhood event that you don't want to relive. So when you step back, you gain perspective on how you want to handle the intensity of your emotions. You realize that your attachment to your rejection is based on childhood events. 
that have nothing to do with you being an adult right now. So you can choose to act differently. From that step back at tip, you can move to step number four, tip number four, which is of course, to choose a different action, to interrupt your negative default patterns, in this case, to be confrontational, because they don't serve your best interests. While it may not feel as gratifying not to be confrontational in the moment, a different action will lead to avoiding emotional spiral, to avoiding shame, guilt, regret, and being reactive. Anyway, I hope that these tips are valuable to you. They are intended to help you to reflect upon and just to continue to add to your toolbox so that when the need arises, you have a variety of healthy ways to handle stressful and emotionally charged situations that align with your well-being and your goals. Now, if you want permanent weight loss solutions, you want to learn how to avoid being triggered emotionally, you want to better understand your self-sabotaging behaviors, I have a workshop designed to help you to understand your unique body so that you can, you know, eat the foods that make you feel energetic so that you know when to eat, how much to eat, you know when to exercise and what type of exercises are best suited for you so that you understand your self-sabotaging behaviors so that you can avoid being emotionally triggered or better yet, avoid responding to feelings. Have yourself a great rest of your day. I will leave a link in the comments for you to go ahead and sign up. Bye.